Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church on this, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, as we continue our journey through the, uh, the time of the church. That's, the, uh, that's what this part of the church here is called, the time of the church. Our order of services today is going to be divine service um, setting one. Oh, sorry, that's next week. My bad. <laughs> setting three. Thank you for paying attention, though. Uh, setting three, uh, which is found uh, printed for you in your bulletin, but also found on page 203 in your hymnal. If you grab one of those one-page bulletins on top of the bookcase, uh, it'll allow you to uh, uh, track your service, just like I do a little tab sticks out to see the uh, to track your order of service. On each of the hymns that we'll be begin, uh, we will be singing this day, our organist will give us a brief introduction. We'll begin singing uh, right after that. We'd like to welcome those that are joining us via our YouTube channel. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Reverend Lewis Bolt. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Luther Church in Hammond, Louisiana. We're glad you found us. We're able to participate with us in our worship. We do long for the day that you'll be able to join us in person. If you haven't already done so, please click the link in the description of the video. It will take you to a PDF of the service so that you can follow along and participate wherever you happen to be. Um, there will be times during our service where I will invite you to stand. As you are able, and if I forget to say that last part, please forgive me, but if you're not able to stand, please feel free to remain seated uh, during that part of the service. Um, I don't think there are any other surprises in store for us. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this place where your glory dwells. As you come to us through your word and through your sacraments, the light that shines forth into the darkness. Open our hearts and our ears to hear that word that is read and proclaimed. May it be a word that convicts and kills and restores through the forgiveness of sins through Christ Jesus. We pray for your blessing upon this time that we have together as we continue to give you thanks and praise for everything that you do for us through your beloved Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 903.
I invite you to stand as you are able for confession and absolution, which is brings before you in the bulletin and also found on page 203 in your hymnal. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But we be the face of forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We'll have a period of silence for reflection uh, and self, on God's word and for self-examination. Let us call unto the Lord, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servants of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our service will be continue with the Kyrie and be immediately followed by the hymn of praise. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you. Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as our service continues, as we speak our verse of the month from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 3 to 4, printed in your bulletin. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of God. Matthew 18, 3 and 4. Our service will continue with the reading. 
The Old Testament reading for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The continues as we speak responsibly. Verses of Psalm 27, the parts with the entire congregation, indicated by a C and in bold. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the evil doers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked for the Lord, that I will succeed that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices to the child of the Lord. I will sing in the Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said to seek my face. My heart says to you, O gracious Lord, do I speak. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, O you who have been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. O Lord, be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it may become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers having become confident in the Lord of, by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the Alleluia in verse. Whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the ninth hour and the tenth, the, the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. <coughs> now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Our service continues as we confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 207 in your hymnal and printed for you in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died in his bed. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, in the name of him who lived, died, and rose from the dead for us and for our salvation, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. There was a man who had been placed in charge of all the possessions of his Lord and his Master. He was called the steward of the house or the master of the house. He was the one who managed the day-to-day -day operations of his Lord's property. And in our gospel reading for today, we hear about one such master of a house or steward of the house. He, he, recognizes, that, he recognizes that his master has a vineyard and there needs to, some work needs to be done in the vineyard. So like every good steward or every good master of the house, he decides what needs to be done 
and then he goes about getting the work done. Now, he can't do all the work by himself, so he thinks to himself, I know what I'll do. I'll go to the marketplace where all the day laborers hang out, and I'll hire some people to work in my master's vineyard. So he wakes up early in the morning, before the dawn of sun. He, it's dark outside, but he goes to that place knowing and trusting that he'll be able to find laborers there. And when he gets there, he negotiates with them. He says, well, this is what I need to have done in my master's vineyard. Will you do it for this much? And they say, no, I'm not going to do it for that much. Okay, well, what about this much? No, I'm not going to do it for that much. So they agree upon a denarius for the day. This is 6 o'clock in the morning, my dear friends. This is when the laborers come into the vineyard to begin their day of work. They agreed to the wage, and they went to the vineyard, and they began their work. Now, now the, the steward, the, the steward of the house, the master of the house, he sees that not all the work that needs to be done is going to get done. So he figures, okay, I'll go and hire some more workers. So he goes back to the marketplace. It's now the third hour of the day, and that's 9 a.m., and, and he goes to the marketplace, and he, he finds people standing there. And he says, well, do you want to work today? And they say, sure, we'll work. What are you going to give us? He says, well, go to the vineyard and work, and I'll give you whatever is right. They trust in the master of the house, the steward of the house, that he will do what is right for them as they work for him through the course of the day. Now it's later in the day. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And all the work that needs to be done is not going to get done with the laborers that they have. So he says, okay, I'm going to go back to the marketplace again. And he finds people standing there and he says, go to the vineyard and work and I'll give you what is right. And then he comes back at the ninth hour of the day. That's that's uh, 6 p.m., okay? He comes back at the ninth hour of the day, and he, find, he needs more workers, and he finds more people, and he says, go to the vineyard and work, and I'll give you what is right. And then he comes back at the 11th hour of the day. Now, it's getting toward dark. This is not the time when you normally work, but he still needs workers. So he sees people standing in the marketplace. He says, what are you still doing here? No one's hired us. No one's hired us to work. We've got to make a living. He says, go to the vineyard. Go to the vineyard and work. Now, he doesn't tell him, but you and I know that he will do whatever is right for those workers because he's a faithful steward, a faithful master of the house. So now the day is over. They've been working for 12 hours in the vineyard. Not all of them have worked 12 hours, but it's time to pay the workers their wages. And the, the Lord of the house tells his foreman, Pay the workers, starting with the first, and go, starting with the last, and going to the first. So those that worked one hour, they came up, and they, they probably didn't expect to receive that which they received, but they received a, denar a denarius. They only worked one hour for the day, and they received the denarius, a full day's wage, even though they only worked one hour. And you can imagine what was going through the minds of those other workers the ones that had worked from 6 to 12, the ones who worked from 3 to 12, the ones who had worked from, well, to 9 in the evening, uh, 66 dollars a day, right? Um, I'm getting my time frame fixed up, sorry. Um, and then those that worked the entire day. But as each group came forward, they all received the denarius, one day's wage, whether they worked an hour, three hours, six hours, Hours. And you can imagine what was going through the thoughts of those workers who had worked. You don't have to imagine because our gospel reading told us, right? They grumbled. It's not right. It's not fair. It's not fair that we work through the, through the burden of the day, through the scorching heat, and we receive the same amount of money that those guys who only worked one hour got? That's not right. That's not fair. And the Lord of the house, he says, my friend, I've given you what you agreed to. I've given you the wage that you agreed to work for. Can I, can I not be generous with what is mine and give the same to others, whether they worked the same amount of time that you did or as little as one hour? 
It's a rhetorical question. He's not looking for an answer. Certainly, it's up to his generosity of how he wants to use his money. And Jesus says, those that will be first, the last will be first, and the first will be last. So ends our gospel reading for today. Jesus told a story, a parable, a parable about the kingdom of heaven. So my dear friends, what's the meaning of the story that Jesus tells? I'll tell you what it's not about. It, it's not about fair labor practices. And it's not about fair wages for a job done. The story has nothing to do with the money and how long they worked. The story is about the kingdom of heaven. The story is about the reign of God in his kingdom. You see, Jesus tells this story to three groups of people. The, the first group of people that Jesus tells the story to is his disciples. You see, Jesus has left and gone to Judea beyond the Jordan River. And as his disciples often do, they, as they usually do, typically do, they traveled with Jesus wherever he went. And so there they are, and Jesus tells this parable about the reign of God in his kingdom to his disciples. You see, Jesus tells this story to his disciples because just before this, in chapter 19, those same disciples rebuked parents for bringing little children to Jesus. They said, Jesus has got no time for these kids. Be gone with you. Go away. But Jesus tells his disciples, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Jesus tells about the good and gracious reign of God in his kingdom to his disciples because they think the kingdom of heaven is only for some people. And just before that, or just after that reading, at the very end of chapter 19, we hear about how the disciples were bragging about all that they had given up to follow Jesus. They left their homes, they left their families, they left their businesses all to follow Jesus. Where is our reward, Jesus? You see, Jesus tells this, disciple, this story to his disciples so that he can teach them about the good and gracious reign of God in his kingdom. But it's not just the disciples. It's the crowds of people that came to Jesus that day. The crowds of people who out of that crowd of people came a young man, a, a rich young ruler, who asked Jesus, what do I need to do to get eternal life. What do I need to do to inherit eternal life, Jesus? Good teacher. So Jesus tells him, well, what do the commandments say? Oh, don't murder, love your father and your mother, and so on and so forth. And the young rich ruler says, oh, I've done all these from my youth. Jesus says, there's one more thing that you need to do. Sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. You see, the young man believed that he could earn his way into heaven. But Jesus says, that's not the path. The path is to follow me. I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, Jesus tells the story about the reign of heaven, God's good and gracious reign, to his disciples and the crowds, but also, also to the Pharisees. Because they have come to Jesus to test him once more with questions. These are the people, my dear friends, who thought that they were right in the eyes of God, that they were righteous because of the things that they did. And they looked down their noses to those who didn't live the way they lived. They were self-righteous. They thought that they would get into the kingdom of heaven based on what they did rather than 
what God has done for them and to them. You see, Jesus teaches the parable of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus tells a story about the good and gracious reign of God in his kingdom so that there can be no doubt in anyone's minds, his disciples, the crowds, and the rich young ruler, and the Pharisees about how one gets into heaven. It's by God's grace, not by any works. Notice that everyone in the kingdom of heaven, all those workers got the same pay, a denarius, regardless of how long they worked or how hard they worked. But Jesus also tells this parable for you and for me. Jesus tells us this parable because sometimes you and I are like that first group of workers who work through the burden of the day in the scorching heat. It's not right. It's not fair. Now, you know, you know that there is neither Jew nor Greek, neither male nor slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. We know that we are all part of the body of Christ, even though we're different people. Even though we come from the same, different backgrounds rather, we're all part of the same body of Christ by God's grace through faith in Christ. But there are those times that you and I, we utter those phrases. It's not right. It's not fair. About our brother and sister in Christ. I've lived my whole life in the church, we say to ourselves. How is it that this guy who just got converted gets to do that? How is it is that that person gets that position of authority and power? It's not right. It's not fair. How is it that that person who lived a worldly life until the day that they, just before they die, that they are in the same place that I'm going to be when God calls me home to himself? It's not fair. It's not right. And I could go on and on and on with the list of things that you and I think are not right and not fair when it comes to the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus tells us the parable, my dear friends. It's a parable that describes God's generosity that is beyond our reason and beyond our understanding. We can't fathom why God should be gracious to sinners because we sometimes forget that we are sinners too. We sometimes forget that once upon a time, whenever it happened, we were once in the devil's kingdom, living the worldly life according to the desires of the flesh. But it was only because of God's gracious nature and his merciful nature and his love for his fallen, broken creation that he came to us who were separated from him and destined to die an eternal death, forever separated from God. He gave us that gift of faith, that trust in the work of Jesus. You see, God's good and gracious will in the reign of his kingdom makes no sense to the world that we live in. And in fact, it makes, to be honest, no sense to you and me. As long as I'm receiving God's grace, that's sometimes all I care about. But God says his grace is for everybody, all people. And it's by grace through faith in Christ that all people are saved, and so we are. When you were baptized, God washed you. He showered you with his grace as you were baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. He's going to feed you with the very body and blood of his beloved son in, with, and under the bread and the wine and the sacrament of the altar. This is God's good and gracious gift to you 
so that you would receive the forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of your faith. You heard the words, I forgive you all your sins, not me, but God. God himself forgives you all your sins for the sake of his beloved son who died to pay for each and every one of your sins and each and every one of my sins. And God pronounces that forgiveness to you so that you know that he has made you into a right relationship with him. Do you deserve God's grace? By no means. Do I deserve God's grace? By no means do I deserve it. But he showers it down upon us for the sake of his beloved son. God is at work in our lives. He is at work to keep us in that one true faith that leads to everlasting life. There will be a day that we hear the voice of our Lord say, come home and rest. And we will. Our soul will leave our body. Our body will be placed into the ground and we will be dwelling with God in heaven above. Receiving all that he has to offer us. Waiting for that last day when he will make us perfect once more. Perfect in body and soul. Perfect human beings that will dwell in the presence of God for all eternity. And he will continue to shower us with his <coughs> gracious works. Not the works of forgiveness of sins, not the works from the rescuing of death and the devil, but the good and gracious gifts that God gives to his beloved people as they dwell with him in heaven above. God's kingdom is a kingdom of grace that he pours out upon us apart from any merit or worthiness in us. He gives it to us freely so that we can be in a right relationship with him. And so we are. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing our hymn today, The Gifts Christ Freely Gives, hymn 602, with a brief introduction. Fills them with 
invite you to stand as you are able for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all the faithful, that we may rejoice in the light of Christ and his salvation and find refuge in his mercy and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. For our congregation and all sister churches throughout the world, that we may confess the truth steadfastly and witness boldly to Christ, our only Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy estate of marriage and the blessing of family, that these gifts would be cherished and honored in our society, especially within the household of faith. Visit those couples who long for a child and give them your comfort and strength. Be with those couples who are expecting and keep them in your mighty right hand. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this nation, that the Lord would bless all people in their callings and in service to their neighbors. For all authorities, that they would serve on behalf of, behalf of the defenseless. And for all who serve in the military, especially Katie, Brent, Mark, Kristen, and Jacob, that they would serve with integrity and honor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the sick, aged, infirm, mourning, or dying, and for those with special needs, especially praying for Kathy. The Andrews family, Sharon, Doug, Chris, Kurt, Melissa, Mike, Billy, Deb, Scott, Theo, Dan, Fred, Irene, Ron, Alan, Deborah, Larry, Bob, Donna, Renee, Dorothy, Jennifer, Donna, Martha, Cheryl, Joey, Jackie, Kevin, Jerome, James, Jordan, Curtis, Candy, Deanna, Glenda, Cindy, Joel, Melanie, Madison, Patty, Bill, Justin, Joshua, Sean, Barbara, Emily, Dylan, Macy, Dennis, the family of Vernon, Mary, the city of Greensburg, Sherry, Ron, Ronald, Kara, Jamie, Gail, Patricia, Jody, Dave, Jeanette, Ken, Lana, Claire, Missy, Shane, Steve, Al, Dana, Isaiah, Tyson, John, Charlie, Marie, Rich, Midge, Olivia, Kimberly, Owen, Bonnie, Chip, Max, Brittany, Francisco, Judy, Brad, Hannah, Jeff, Pete, the family of Paulette, Sandra, Kathleen, Ronnie, Braden, David, Andrea, Bill, Joan, Ruth, Jim, Susan, Peggy, Jojo, Joseph, Neil, Denise, Lee, Doris, Reverend Taglauer, Rex, Cricket, Jean, Lottie, Gail, the faculty, staff, students, and families of St. Helena Career and College Academy, for the people of the Ukraine, and for those impacted by disasters of nature and man, that they would be given healing in accord with God's will and grace to sustain them in their need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who rejoice over the good and gracious gifts that God showers down from above, especially the gift of answered prayers for Gage, for the gift of a successful surgery for Kimberly, for the gift of healing and recovery for Bob, Donna, Gloria, Julie, Arnold, and Jeanette, and for the gift of another year of life for Debbie, Mary, Jackie, Kim, Ashley, Jason, Jason, and Walter. May we all use God's gifts to glorify his name and love our neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who will receive Christ's holy supper from this altar, that they would eat and drink cordially in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of their sins and the healing of their bodies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy that we may not forget the witness of the faithful who lived and died in Christ, and that we may at last be joined with them in the marriage supper of the Lamb and his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy, for all Christians, that we may seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near, forsaking all wicked ways and unrighteous thoughts. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, Trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our service will continue uh, momentarily with the service of the sacraments of the altar. For those of you uh, who are worshiping in person, um, if you haven't already done so, you may place your tithe, gift, and offering in the offering plates at the entrance of the sanctuary of the Fart, along with your attendance card. And for those who are joining us uh, via our YouTube channel, we encourage you to continue to support the work that God has given us to do in this place by sending in your tithe, gift, and offering directly to the church office. If you'd like to drop it off, please call first. Make sure that someone is here to receive you. And then
now our musicians will give us a musical interlude as I prepare the table for the service of the sacraments of the altar. I invite you to stand as you're able for the service of the sacraments of the altar. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth with full acclaim, shout the glory of your creation for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life in your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of adam and eve who ate the forbidden fruits and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second adam your son jesus christ our lord who made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him we give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the name of the Son of God, the Tentation, but the Lord of the Lord, 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 the Lord of this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
invite you to stand as you for the post treaty council. Oh. 
had with us on this, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and that makes next Sunday the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. And I hope you can join us for our worship service in person or via our YouTube channel. We do long for the day that those who are worshiping with us from afar will be able to join us in person and uh, gather together as the body of Christ in this place. The announcements are found on the back of your bulletin. There's a calendar of events related to activities at St. Paul over the course of the next week. Uh, this afternoon, we have our youth, youth, youth catechesis class from uh, 1 to 2.30, and then a brief share class from 3 to 5. And then on Monday, I'll be over on campus for our, our LCMSU program. I, I go over, spend an hour in the student union. I alternate to Mondays and Thursdays, try to, anyway, depending on my schedule, um, to, to be present in that place, but also to be, hopefully meet with the LCMS Lutherans who are going to our attending Southeastern. Um, on Tuesday, we'll, we'll be starting a new Bible study class. We wrapped up the book of Colossians, and uh, we're going to start a new study. And I think it's going to be a, a sort of an overview of the prophets. So if you'd like to know about prophets, who they are, what they did, all that, that kind of stuff, I encourage you to join us from uh, 1.30 on Tuesday. Um, and then on next Saturday, we have another home football game, uh, which means we have a youth group fundraiser from this time starting at 1 p.m. The game's been moved up. So to, um, uh, I, I think we actually need to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll send out a voice message about that. I'm not sure about the time on the calendar yet. That's right. But anyway, uh, but there is another youth group fundraiser next week here. And for those of you who are on the youth group, just track the Facebook page or like the Facebook page. And uh, next Sunday's activities are there as well. Uh, next Sunday is LWML Sunday. We'll be observing the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And the announce, we're going to get to the announcements now in the green sheet. The green sheet is emotional resource for individuals, families, and small groups built around the corners of daily prayer down in the Lutheran Service Book. That's that maroon hymnal that I'm holding in my hand. And also contains our reading plan to read through the Bible in two years. We're, we're going to be starting the book we've been studying in our Sunday morning Bible study class, 1 Peter. We're going to be reading through 1 Peter, and then we'll actually start 2 Peter, the second letter that Peter wrote, um, at the end of the week. So I hope you can join us on that journey to read through the Bible in two years. It doesn't matter where you start. You'll end up in the same spot two years from the day you start, I promise. If you, if you follow along, that is. Um, on the inside of those that are requested prayers from the congregation, and if you put someone on the prayer list, you know, please keep us up to date as best you can about their condition and circumstances so that we can keep our prayer list up to date. And then in the back of the announcements, I mentioned that next week is LWML Sunday. They're having a social, ice cream social after the service uh, on Sunday, next Sunday, but they're also taking up a collection of items uh, to uh, give to a, a Lolly Kemp Hospital, Cherry Hospital in uh, Independence. There's been a little confusion about just exactly what they're taking. So, the last I heard, the authoritative word was from Heather Miller, who said, it can be new and gently used. Okay, so if you have gently used items that are on this list, you can bring them in and put them in the purple baskets that are around the cross hallway. Uh, purple for LWML, right? And, uh, and we tr we'll get those delivered as soon as we can. Um, pack a box, pack a shoe box gift for Christmas for children. Uh, that's a long announcement that I'm not going to read because I know that you can read. Well, most of you can read. I think everyone here can read it today. Right. Good. Um, so uh, the details are in there and what, what's taking place with that program. The, the most probably important thing is that the deadline is November 12th. Okay, the deadline is November 12th for that. So just pay attention. Mark that on the count. The altar flowers today have been given to the glory of God. The food of the month for October is going to be oatmeal and bread. So as you have means and ability, to bring that into church, place it in the wicker basket. We try to deliver that once a week to the Tangent Food Pantry. And then there's a stewardship thought for you based on our gospel reading for today, and a life thought for you based on our, uh, all three of our readings, the Old Testament reading, the gospel reading, and the epistle reading. And so God's word continues to speak into every situation that we, ha we have in our lives, most particularly the gift of life that God has given to us and to shepherd and watch over and promote. All right, I know there's... A garage sale coming up in November. We haven't set the date, but as you have, as you're going through your house and you decide, I no longer need this or I no longer want this, and it's in decent condition, uh, you can bring it up to church, put it in the back room, the back of the education building, and uh, the, the ladies, Marie and a couple other ladies, are pricing uh, the materials now, and we'll be having the sale sometime in November. Any announcements that I'm not aware? Board of directors meeting next Tuesday. tomorrow. No, Monday, Monday night, right. Tomorrow night. So that didn't make the calendar. So yes, board of directors meeting tomorrow, 7 p.m. in the church library. That will be in person and uh, a live stream for those that won't be able to join us in person. But the board of directors will be meeting tomorrow night at 7 p.m. All right. Anything else? 
Sing your hands. I will greet you in the back. We'd like to thank those that joined us. We hope you can join us next Sunday uh, for our worship service. So we do hope you can join us in the future uh, in person.